My name is Bria Turner, and this is my week four project. All right, for the interviews, first I interviewed Michaela. For the first question of what is love, she said love is when you care for someone unconditionally and feel a positive connection to them. For the next question of do you believe there are different types of love, she said absolutely, I believe that there's platonic love, romantic love, and the love you have for your significant others, friends, and family. For the question of what is beauty, she said she feels like beauty is when someone has pleasing characteristics. For what a, she thinks attractiveness is, she said it's when someone has pleasing characteristics that appeals to your taste. For the question of can someone be beautiful and attractive or vice versa, she said yes, you can be beautiful, but I may not be attracted to you because you may not have characteristics that I like. For the question of what do you think it takes to have a successful relationship with someone, she said um, communication, honesty, loyalty, and affection. For the question about does she think divorce rates can be decreased, she said yes by open communication and through waiting until you're ready to make a commitment. For the um, next question that I had to make up, I chose, do you think attractiveness plays a huge role in relationships? She said yes because if you're not attracted to your partner, the chemistry will not be as strong. Next, I interviewed Shonda for the first question of what is love. She said she feels like it's an emotion that one feels towards people, places, or things. For the next question of do you believe there are different types of love, she said yes, I think it is. For example, love for people versus things, and there's also different types of love for people depending on who they are. For example, um, you can love friends and family different than spouses. For the question of what does she think beauty is, she said Beauty is something different to everyone, and it's in the eye of the beholder. And just because something lacks beauty physically doesn't mean it isn't beauty internally. I'm beautiful internally. For the question of what did she think attractiveness is, she said attractiveness is a feeling that draws you to something or someone. For the next question about can someone be beautiful and not attractive, she said yes, because you can be not attractive but have a beautiful heart and soul, or you can be very attractive and have a very and be very ugly on the inside. For what does she think um, it takes to make a successful relationship? She said determination, and it has to be a joint effort between like-minded individuals. And you also have to be open, honest, respectful, and trustworthy, and willing to sacrifice because it's a give-and-take situation. And I asked her, does she think divorce rates can be decreased? She said, yes, people need to learn how to set aside superficial things and to truly marry for love. And she said also she feels like if you allow marriage licenses to expire and give the options to renew them. For the question I had to make up, I said, do you think people get married before they know if they love the person? She said, yes, I think they get married even if they don't love them because people love the thought of marriage. And she also feels like some people hope that they will grow to love the person. Next, I interviewed Rashard. For the first question of what is love, he said, love to him is happiness and joy and also no stress and no worries. When I asked him, is there different types of love? He said, absolutely. You have different types of love, like love for shoes or objects or people when i asked him what he thinks beauty is he said he thinks beauty is in the eye of the beholder and for what is attractiveness he said it's something that you like or that catches your eye when i asked him can someone be beautiful on the inside sorry can someone be beautiful and not attractive he said yes it depends on their personality when i asked him what it takes to have a healthy relationship he said communication understanding and being transparent with each other Next, I asked him, how does he think that we can decrease divorce rates in America? He said, by spending more time with your significant other and actually wanting to be there. The question I came up with is, is it better to be with the one you love or love the one you're with? He said, it's a tricky question because the one you really love may not be a good fit for your life, but the one that you grow to love could end up being the one that's perfect for you. Um, Next, I interviewed Brittany for the first question of what is love. She said, love is to care deeply for someone. I next asked her, do you believe there's different types of love? She says, yes, I think you have romantic love. You can have a friendship love and then a family love. When I asked her, what is beauty? She said, beauty is finding something physically appealing. When I asked her, what is attractiveness? She said, it's having an emotional and mental connection. Next, I asked her, can someone be beautiful and not attractive? She said, someone can be beautiful but not attractive because someone can be beautiful to look at with a terrible personality, making them not attractive, and someone can have a magnetic personality but not be beautiful. Uh, Next, I asked her, what does it take to make a 
successful relationship. She said love, communication, and honesty. Uh, the next thing I asked her, does she think divorce rates can be decreased? Uh, she said she doesn't think they can. Uh, the question I came up with is, do you believe that love is unconditional? She said, no, I think that someone can do something terrible and hateful towards you and you can, and it can make you not love them anymore. Last, I interviewed Gina. Um, for the question of what is love, she said she can't explain it, but she feels like it's loving yourself before you can love anyone else. When I asked her if she thinks there's different types of love, she said yes. Definitely, it depends on a person's frame of mind because people have different ways of showing love. Uh, the third question I asked was what is beauty to her? She said beauty is in the heart and not always something you see. You can know someone who is attractive on the outside, but not beautiful on the inside. When I asked her what is attractiveness to her, she said it's something that you're drawn to that may not be pretty to others, but is appealing to you. Um, the next question I asked is... Can someone be beautiful and not attractive and vice versa? She said, definitely. They can have a beautiful interior but may not be attractive or they may be physically beautiful but you're not attracted to them. The next question I asked is, what does she think it takes to make a successful relationship? She said, don't try to change them. Just let them be who they are because if you do try to force someone to change, it can be very harmful to the relationship. The next question I asked is, does she think that divorce rates can be decreased? She said, I think a lot of people need to date more um they don't really get to know each other before they get married the question i came up with was do you think you can be in a successful relationship with someone you don't find attractive she said i guess anything is possible if you can look past it some people are in relationships for money and other things rather than attractiveness some similarities i found between the interviews were that most of them had the same idea of what love is. They most all felt that attractiveness is when someone has characteristics that are pleasing to you. And they all felt like um, someone can be beautiful on the inside and unattractive on the outside. Some differences I noticed were that um, I felt that it, a lot of the differences they had had to do with like some of the interviewees being older and they like had a different perception on what it takes to have a healthy relationship than the younger ones. And it's most likely because they have a little more experience in the area. Another difference is like Brittany was the only one who felt like there's no way to, you know, decrease divorce rates. And also Shonda had like really interesting solutions for how to decrease divorce rates. What is love today compared to a decade ago? Uh, a decade ago, we didn't have as much social media and online dating, so we got to be free to, f so we, sorry, so we were able to have more face-to-face, -face and we were in person more, which gave you a better feel for people and who they are. Today, everything's through the phone, and, like, we're not in the moment like we used to be, and back then, people love people for who they were on the inside, and nowadays, people tend to lose, like, lose sight of that, and they love people more for what they can do for them rather than how they make them feel um in an article i read by susanna susanna wise she talks about how people are getting married later than a decade ago and that although the number of unmarried americans living with their significant other has risen the proportion who's married has gone down i think this is because this generation is more afraid to commit and would rather keep their options open than settle down and find someone they truly love what is a healthy relationship? Um, so for an ex the example, for the, and the relationship I'm going to analyze is one of my close friends. Her relationship's really healthy. I see them as having a very securely attached relationship, um, which according to the book is one of the more ideal relationships. They get along really well. They actually became close very fast. They're both really independent and they're also really committed. Um, a way I see it's really healthy is like he really expresses her to he allows her to express how she feels and her emotions like if he does something to bother her or like offend her she kind of speaks on it right away and instead of him shutting it down and like just ignoring her feelings he understands and like takes in what she's saying and apologizes and tries to fix the situation uh they also just like go out on a lot of dates they're just really happy and they communicate really well which is a really huge thing in relationships and um when some relationships lack communication it's kind of where they start to crumble and fail uh for a toxic relationship i'm going to use another friend i want to my friends as an example um she's to me has a more avoidant 
in an anxiously attachment relationship, which according to the book is one of the main causes of stress in relationships when the male's avoidant and the female's anxious. Um, her boyfriend's really avoidant. He um likes to spend time alone, like more time by himself rather than with her. Um, and when she does like ask to spend more time or like expresses how he does things that hurts her or makes her feel bad, he kind of shuts her down. He doesn't want to really hear it. He thinks any type of communication is arguing, and he's just not really good at being in a relationship. She's also really dependent on him, and I feel like that's a big downfall in the relationship. She's not like able to be independent and that plays a huge role. She also is kind of jealous and she doesn't isn't too trustworthy of him. So if you don't have trust in a relationship, it's kind of you really don't have anything. <laughs> um so yeah, that's basically why I feel like the relationship is kind of toxic and not the healthiest. Five myths I came up with. Um, the first myth is love is when you care for someone deeply. Love is actually more complex than than liking. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, love is more complex than liking, making it more difficult to study. Um, there's different types of love, so it's hard to just give one general definition of what love is. Um, another myth I found is attractiveness is having an emotional connection. The book describes attractiveness as being whatever the people of any given place or time find attractive. The next myth I found is there's one type of love. There are different types of love, like passionate and companionate love, which breaks down into romantic, consummate, and fatuous love. The next myth I found was nothing can be done to decrease divorce rates. Uh, the book brings up multiple solutions geared from a survey like keeping ro romance alive, working through problems when unhappy, and to enter relationships with a long-term orientation and an intention to persist. The last myth I found is relationships are only about love, communication, and honesty. Um, it's Relationships are about so much more than that. Um, it's also about acknowledging and accepting differences and weaknesses, and it takes effort to, as stated in the book, make a relationship into a clueless utopia of social equality in which both partners freely give and receive shared decision-making and enjoy life together. And this is my references. And that is all. Thank you for watching.